that's a better intro than I can ever do. You're too kind, people. You're too kind. Yes. To be fair, you are the ones who invented that over here. Uh, I think it's been used on many a wrestler since then, but I would like to thank you for letting me be the first. So that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Yes. Manchester, let's hear some noise for the real one. I know. It, to me, it just doesn't feel right to be in a ring and sitting. I know. It feels weird. It feels so weird. It's super weird. What is yeah. going on? The Elder Scrolls? I know. Very, very fancy chairs. Is this a game? Yes. Noble chairs. Again, all by right. the way, the real one came all the way to Manchester to meet and greet with you. Let's make some noise for him. Hey, let's Sunday just... Sunday fun day. Wherever I stop, somebody can ask me a question. There we go. Well, I'm, I'm going to fangirl for a moment because I have to say, so I m had the pleasure of meeting you and seeing your NXT career, and I was like, this guy Bang. is amazing. I mean, I have so many great memories of you and Cass. You're two of my favorites in NXT. Can you walk us through what got you to NXT as far as your wrestling career? Um, well, for one, hey, Enzo and Cass are still alive, and that is, holy smokes, guys. Hey, nobody had more fun than Enzo and Cass, I can tell you that. Um, we're lucky to be alive. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, man. Uh, couldn't do it the same way twice. Uh, happy to be here, but... Nonetheless, my wrestling career started off of a YouTube video that went viral. Wow. Got discovered by Triple H. Triple H saw my YouTube video. He gave me an opportunity to try out. Uh, this is before they had an NIL program. There was the, uh, the Enzo experiment. I got hired, never wrestled before in my entire life. Wow. Tried out for the WWE. Dusty Rhodes was there. He liked my promo. They hired me. I got thrown in the fire. My first day on the job uh, in NXT, I went out there to do a job match, as they would say. Go out there and get beat up in like 10 seconds. I really just thought I was going to have a bar story. Like, oh, I could go home and tell people I actually did this thing. Like, I have a bar story. I had a wrestling match. And I think they were doing a charity for me at that point. But ultimately, John Cena was there that day. He asked me if I wanted to get in the ring with him in the dark segment. I told him a lie. I told John Cena I had a tag team partner, Big Cass. He wasn't my tag team partner, not yet, but I just booked him in that moment. <laughs> so I knew I needed help, man. I, I'm a little guy and uh, in a world of giants and I knew that by standing next to this big guy I could probably you know talk a little bit more in trash than I what if it was just me getting my teeth kicked in right so uh in that moment John Cena asked me and Cass if we wanted to come to the ring in the dark segment against Damian Sandow who was the intellectual savior of the masses so he was supposed to be smart so in that moment I'm a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this guy's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. And Damian Sandow, you're so smart, but you're standing in the ring with me, John Cena, and Big Cass, and I got to tell you, there's zero dimples on our hind end, but do you know how many dimples there are on a golf ball? There's 168 dimples on a golf ball, zero on our hind end because we're hard body. And you know what you are? You're S-A-W-F-T. Soft. And so in that moment, soft was born. And two stars were born when John Cena repeated soft. And so if you're in the UK and you're watching NXT at that time, and you flip on the TV and Enzo and Cass come out, who you've never seen together before in your life, but the whole crowd is going soft, soft, soft. You're like, wait, what? who are these guys? And why are people saying this word? Yeah. And it didn't make any sense to the viewers at home, but thanks to those three, 300, 400 people in NXT that showed up to those shows and traveled around Florida, and they started to say our catchphrases with us, uh, people in the UK, well, shit, we got here, and you, all you heard was, oh, and oh, 
right? I mean, damn. So that, that is a credit to the fans, the 300 people that were in Florida that got Enzo and Cass over to a point where when I came here, I said, my name is Enzo Amore. And I heard it, and it was crazy because I had never been here in my life. So to be able to come to a foreign country, thanks to two, 300 people in Orlando, yeah. repeating catchphrases for us, yeah. uh, they changed our lives, man. So we really owe it to the NXT crowd and then the faithful that were here in the UK that came to the night after WrestleMania. It's a lot of the same crowd uh, that was in the building. So like the NXT fans, they're the ones who really propelled Enzo and Cass. Yeah. Honestly, for sure. Uh, by the way, round of applause. I mean, my favorite thing about you guys and, and, and that entire kind of storyline was it was so memorable. It was no, no one else was doing anything like that. I feel very honored and, and proud that I was there to see the early days of you guys. But if we can talk about the UK fans, as you just mentioned, what's it been like to sign for your fans here in Manchester? How's everyone hey, been for shout you? Shout out to uh, the people here who came here who love pro wrestling. Yeah. We all share one thing in common, right? right. We all love wrestling. Yeah. And, that's, and that is more than, than you could say about most things in this world, right? When you got one thing that you all are passionate about and we all love, we can at least agree on that, yeah. okay? We might not agree on who your favorite wrestler is, right. what your favorite style is, what your favorite match is, re wrestler, but we all just love this thing. And, I, I, I just like to say to the people that are here today, try to keep one thing in mind when you think about pro wrestling. We do this because when we were children, we loved it. So if you're a child and you want to be a pro wrestler one day, I can tell you when I was a child, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. And if I can do it, then you can do it. I promise you. I promise you, all right? So if you really, there's, there's, there's so many jobs that you can have in this business that aren't necessarily in the ring, and there's people who talk about pro wrestling for a living, people who talk about it on the internet, and I just want to allude to some of the people here that whenever you're talking on the internet about what it is that we do as pro wrestlers, and you talk about this, please remember that you were doing this because when you were a kid, you wanted to do it. Because you were inspired, because wrestling and action figures and video games, those toys are made for children, all right? And when you're in my position in the WWE for seven years, and you have this thing in your hand, and it's a PG company, you can't be that example using curse words, you can't be out there setting a bad example by talking about things that would get you fired or get the company in trouble, because this is the lifeblood of pro wrestling, the microphone, all right? So when you are a pro wrestler and you are doing this thing, remember you're doing it for children, all right? There's somebody in the crowd who's not thinking about their financial woes, their marital issues, their relationship problems, their trouble at work because there's an adult with them who is living vicariously through their child who is having the best day of his life watching a pro wrestling show. That kid is having the best day of his life. And that father or that mother or that sibling gets to share that moment with that child. So if you think when we get in here, I'm performing for the people that are going to talk about what it is that I do in my headlock or my drop kick, I need you to realize that I do this for kids. So well said. Thank you for that. We love that. I have one fangirl question, then we're going to get to the actual questions from the crowd. We're going to make it interactive. But we're, gonna, we're talking, we're going to go way back to Baby Enzo. When you were getting into wrestling, who were you a fan of? Like, who did you want to emulate? Who resonated with you as a wrestler? I think that that is an important question, right? Because what, what maybe I like, maybe the next guy doesn't like, right? And I got to be honest with you, and I'm going to take heat for it but I don't care. If you're a wrestler and you're wearing underwear in the ring, you and I share nothing in common. Never, 
did I ever as a kid say to myself, I want to get in a ring in a pair of underwear and have a fight? Okay? I know this. I thought Shawn Michaels was the coolest thing that ever walked. He had the dangly earrings. He had the sparkly vests. He had the things hanging. He was dripping before dripping was a thing. And, uh, you know, you're just a kid and you don't know any better, but you see those bright colors and those hearts and that. And that's marketing 101. So if you're a pro wrestler and you're getting into this business or you want to be a pro wrestler, be the action figure in the aisle that you always wanted to be. Just whatever that toy is, you want the kid to walk past Spider-Man, walk past Venom, walk past Batman, not know what wrestling is, and go, that's the coolest toy here, and I want that toy. Very well said. Love it. Well, I, I could fangirl all day because you are one of my favorites, but let's get to the fan questions. If you have a question for real one, just raise your hand. We've got one right here. Hello. Hello, my friend. Uh, what's your name, sir? My name is Dennis, and I come from Ireland for the love of wrestling today. Yay! Give hey, it up for Ireland, everybody. He came hey, all the hey, way hey. from Ireland. Most people don't know this about old Zoe, <laughs> but I am your Irish brethren. I got in here with my Irish passport. Is that I am doing? an Irish citizen, people. Wow. <laughs> it's funny, right? Can I walk into Europe like I've been here my whole life. It's great. We all want Irish passports now. Thank you, Brexit. Uh, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah. My question is actually on about the, the promo that you had with The Miz on Raw when you said, the Who's Your Daddy promo. Behind the brains when you were speaking through that promo, what were your thoughts and the fan, the fan reaction when you said, the Who's Your Daddy? That's funny you should say that. <laughs> it's funny you bring up the only time in my entire career where I could not rebuttal in a promo. So I went out there against The Miz, and I was told you're turning heel, and if you respond to The Miz, you're going to get fired. Shut up, take the brow beating from Miz, and save it for the one line that we're going to make you say, which will definitely turn you into a heel, because that's a pregnant woman who's married to that guy you're in the ring with, and you just said to his wife, you don't need to say how you doing. The question you need to be asking is, who's the daddy? That was written by Vince McMahon, delivered by me, and meant to turn me into a bad guy. And it did. And I, if I'm honest, never wanted to turn heel. I wanted to stay baby face. Uh, Cause it meant so much to me to have kids that looked up to me that people can't really put themselves in my shoes and see what I was seeing. But when I see this little kid wearing my wig, doing my dance, wearing my clothes, and I know that I'm gonna let him down and there's lots more like him and I'm about to put on a show that is not real to who I am as Eric the human, but more real to the character portrayal of a heel that they want you to play on TV. This is a television show and I don't write the script. I could control only certain things. And if I gotta be a bad guy, I'm gonna let a lot of kids down in the process. And it was a tough day at the office when I got flipped heel. To your point, I got buried on a microphone and uh, I had to sit there and take it. And then I had to bury a man's wife. But at that point, I, I won a cruiserweight championship as a heel. I got to work with some of the best cruiserweight wrestlers in the world. Uh, I got to wrestle for a title in Madison Square Garden. So being a bad guy wasn't all that bad. Great question. Thank you so much. We love your candid thoughts. If I can ask you quickly, Enzo, do you have some career highlights that stand out? I mean, you have so many great moments, but for you, what were the moments that really stood out as highlights for you personally? Well, for one, um, coming here for the first time, when I was in NXT, uh, I'll never forget, you know, me and Cass and uh, a couple other wrestlers, we were afforded the luxury of being in the NXT first ever guys in the video game. So when we're in NXT, we're not making money like 
you fill up uh, the O2 arena, you're still getting paid your salary. Whatever it is that your weekly wage is has nothing to do with the house, the attendance, or the pay-per-view. You're just making whatever you're making. And at that point, I mean, you're just happy to have a job being a pro wrestler. So I'll take what I can get. Well, when we came here for the first time, I was just in a video game and a, and a direct deposit hit in my account that I couldn't even believe was real, right? <laughs> So I took that money and I bought my parents tickets to come see me wrestle here in London at, U at UK NXT TakeOver. And so being able to afford my parents the opportunity to come see me wrestle in a country they'd never been to, their son was getting to see the world. My parents never saw shit. <laughs> so it was just such a blessing. That was, that was a memory for me. First time I come to a foreign country on an airplane, have a wrestling match, my parents are there, taking pictures in a red telephone booth and, yep. you know, all that. So it was great. So thank you guys for that warm welcome. My parents were in the building. That is the best story, an exclusive here at Comic-Con. Thank you for that candid story. We love that. Mr. Brooker, let's take it to the fans and get another question. Just raise your hand, everybody, if you've got a question for Mr. Rio Juan, Enzo, oh, no. we've got a champion here, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Give it up for the champ, everybody. All right, champ. Congratulations. Here we go. What's your name, sir? Uh, Graham. And what's your question? Um, hello, Enzo, my bona fide stud, my certified G. Um, what was it like working with Austin Aries? What was the question? What, what was it like working with Austin Aries? Is that right? Austin, your thoughts on Austin Aries? Honestly, I never really got to work with him. Um, we were in NXT at the same time, uh, but he worked Neville uh, for the Cruiserweight title at um, WrestleMania. And I, th I don't know what happened thereafter, if he was in NXT or, uh, or 205 with me, um, but I never really worked with him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I, I think I probably, I probably tagged with him on my team or maybe tagged against him, but never one-on-one. -on -one. That said, I mean, one person you did work with, who I think is a, certainly is a special place in my heart, you mentioned him, uh, Neville Park. Um, what, what, I mean, he's a, obviously mad. A lot of people don't guy. know that Park and Enzo were more Enzo and Cass than Enzo and Cass. No way. Park and Enzo were driving together, riding together, working together, living together more than anybody. So that's my best friend you're talking about, Ben. I call him Benny Brolic. Uh, Pac is unbelievable. I learned more about wrestling by just watching him, getting in the car with him and listening to him talk about his matches afterward. What a luxury to be in the vehicle with Sami Zayn and Neville when they're working 20 minute main event matches in NXT. And you get to see what they are doing on Friday night and then Saturday night and Sunday, and you, you see the changes they make in their matches. When you're in the car, you hear what they want to do, and then you see them go out there and improvise and ad-lib and just be the pros that they are. It's a first-class education in the business, being in that vehicle. He's Obviously, one of the best, yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, we're in Neville country right now. I mean, he is an amazing talent. You have so many great friends in NXT. You mentioned Sami Zayn, Mojo Rawley. Who were your buddies in your NXT days? Like, who did you get well, along with? I think with you them? saw us. I know you know. I did. Orlando, uh, we were all downtown. over town, man. Uh, you could have at any point in 2014, 13, 15, walked through downtown Orlando on a Sunday, and you'd have seen the big seven-foot-tall guy yep. and Enzo bending our elbow, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were out there with... I mean, if you watched NXT at that time, every single person who was on NXT was out at those bars with us. Right. And again, be, being <laughs> it was Orlando a great girl, crew, guys. Yeah. And we tore every, every town a new one. I, I'll tell you right now. For if sure. If we showed up, we showed out. It was a really good time. We're lucky to live through it. Yeah. And uh, 
Yeah, those those. So, so many good guys. Though. I'm an Orlando girl, so that's how Enzo and I met. I'm good friends with uh, Mojo Raleigh. But I will say, in all seriousness, that alumni in NXT, like that era of NXT, everyone was so good. You had like Leo Kruger, which was eventually Adam Rose. You had Mojo Raleigh. You had you guys and Cass. Yeah, I mean, so if, if you just look at the incredible uh, workers that were. Yeah. Uh, brought LA in from Knight. other companies, really poached the best talent in the world, but I just happened to be in the building when they did that, yeah. and I'm thankful they did because they had Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, uh, you know, Dax Harwood, and, and Cash uh, Wilder, Wheeler, what, what, what yeah. the, FTR, yeah. uh, Blake and Murphy, Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, yeah. Bailey, um, Charlotte, Carmella, Sasha, the, 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 I mean, that's like, to think about the girls I named right there in and of itself, the, the roster's crazy. It so was, it, it was, I was yeah. a part of that women's revolution. I, you know, uh, saw some of these, these girls have some of the best female matches that I maybe have ever been had. So Sasha good. and Charlotte did it every night, ba Bailey, Becky. Um, and then, you know, on, on top, uh, you know, between Neville, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, the top of the card was unbelievable. Yeah. So I, I was just lucky to be on the card, right? Yeah. You know, you get eight matches on a card. A lot of people don't realize you only got eight matches on a card. So if you can get booked by the greatest company in the world, WWE, on one of those cards in any one of those spots, you're lucky. You got your main event is your title match, yeah. women's title, women's tag team titles, men's tag team title, intercontinental title, cruiserweight title. Well, that's six title matches, and there's only two more matches left on the card. <laughs> so one of them's probably a battle royal to fill talent and give you entrances because everybody knows the best part of a wrestling match is before it starts. Um, so, uh, I mean, if you can get in the opening act, you know, like Enzo and Cass were the opening act. Um, it was the best spot to be. I don't care if you were the referee when you came through the curtain at the opening of the show, the people pop for you. So they're happy to see wrestling. They've been waiting for it. They're hungry. And uh, if you're fortunate enough to open the shows, it's a great spot. I mean, I'm biased because I was there, but to me, that was the golden era of NXT, and you guys, honestly, yeah. were the highlight. Every show, amazing. Round of applause, honestly. You stole the show every single night. Mr. Brooker, do we have any fan I, I'm questions? I'm hovering with purpose. Um, oh, yes. We are, we are in the closing stretch of your time with us in no. the ring tonight. However, right, Brooker. in wrestling, this is by fans for fans, and I believe you're a great believer in giving the people what they want. Could what? you do me a solid, sir? I myself am not seven foot tall, but could I be Big Chris tonight with you to give these people what they want? Because I know I need to hear it. They need to hear it. He's putting you on the spot. No pressure. Uh, you know, you're putting me on the spot. I don't own this, so I think we can do it in parody, though, and that's legal. Uh, is, am I right about that? I think all those catchphrases together are owned by one company. We're, you're amongst friends. No bottom. one will tell. No one will tell anyone. But maybe somebody can help me here. Um, if you, if you really want me to spit these bars that you guys know me for, just help me out when I point the mic to you, okay? All right? You ready? My name is... And I am a certified G and a bona fide stunt, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Big Chris, and he's about six foot tall. And you can't teach that. Bada boom, realest guys in a room. How you doing? Yes! Now, hey, if you guys aren't having fun here with Monopoly events, Paragon, and all the great people that came for the love of wrestling, well, then there's only one, one word to describe, describe you, you, and we're going to spell it, it out, out for you. Yeah. S-A-W-F-T Soft! How you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, give guys. it up one more time for Real One! Enzo, 
He's going to be back.